carry-oriented jungler. I mean, we saw it yesterday. Swift versus Kakao. How unreal was that matchup? And Kakao just extending that aggression into Clear Love and Clear Love just dropping the ball. Yeah, 100%. So they've gone with a very good strategy. And EDG as a team haven't been able to get behind their jungler as much as they otherwise would have been able to during the regular split. But again, that's how important it is to get Clear Love back on the right foot. These priority picks, picking up the jungler first pick from blue side when champions like Braum are available. Yeah, definitely oh. agree. Braum is going to be locked away. Same two first picks as EDG put forward the game before as Rookie is going to try his hand at the Azir. Vaughn, he can go to the victor if he wants. He can just hop back into exactly the same matchup and see whether he can do it better. So Kassanen also available. One of Pawn Very special that does an okay job against Azir and then will take over the late game. One what thing I want to point out, doesn't do fantastically. Damn. It's actually one of the matchups that I don't really see that often, especially now that uh, Azir can go Rylai's Crystal Scepter and get a little bit tanky with an Abyssal. So we'll see exactly what Pawn wants to play. Uh, but Zatai plays Yasuo top lane. Not saying he's going to play it this game, but one combo that is often overlooked is Azir Yasuo. Oh and the potential goodness. for huge plays in that regard. So it's just something to keep an eye out. Double win wall still on the table. Yeah, the swoop and scoop breath. Pretty ridiculous. That said, speaking of uh, big plays, Mako going back to the Annie and Koro is going back to Rumble. So I objective actually, control and team fighting. Yeah, I really like what EDG are doing right here. These are champions that, that from the start, they've made really good names for themselves on. Like Koro's uh, Rumble comes to mind straight away. Deny the the playmaking. The playmaking ability that can come out of Mako. Right now, they're saying if we lose, we're going to lose playing EDG style of League of Legends. We're going to lane swap most likely. We're going to get behind our jungler and we're going to look for plays out of our support. And it just goes back to I hate to, to repeat it, but that loss against Unlittle Potential, the reason why they were discovered is in draft phase, you know, taking the Twisted Fate as the counter pick to Clear Love's Evelyn. And now you'll notice anytime EDG pick Eve, they always make sure that TF is not available. EDG learned after that series we have to hide our jungler. We have to make sure that Clear Love can't get countered. We have to protect him. So again, priority pick on Terexai, protecting Clear Love, letting him lead the charge with Mako, letting him snowball pawn. Yeah, and I'm expecting the Callista right now out of deft. Well, you can't because it's been oh, banned. It's been banned. Damn oh it, my so god, jinx. this is what I've been expecting. No, it's not coming out. I He's don't even not going to play Tall in town. About it. <laughs> Just, even if it's hovered, let's get excited. <laughs> yeah, so maybe something like a Jinx sent to come out and try and outrange the You know, the when, when we just do duo casts, it feels okay when I only get put in the dumpster by one, one person, person, but hey, now it's the double. He yeah, put, so that's okay. He but put you in the dumpster and I lit it on fire. Yeah, exactly what happened. Let me be excited, guys. And the Fizz is going to be locked away, so definitely still a comfort pick for Pawn and Deft on a whole lot more lane power. The tie just locks in the Aurelia, though. Oh, yes. We're fighting fire with fire here in the hands of IG. Okay, so the the one, number one thing that I want to point out is the fact that Deft is being put onto Lucian. You have Annie Lucian. If they lane swap, if they don't, they're going for raw, aggressive power into that early game. Again, shore up the lane weaknesses, protect clear love, allow him to play his game. Do you know what this reminds me of? When King, we're on the verge of elimination, <laughs> and they were like, we're just going to win lanes. Like, we don't care how we go out. We're just oh, going and then, to... And then Name was 70 CS, CS up. up at 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. He was like, I think it was 52 CS up at 10 minutes or something ridiculous like that. Look at the fire in Deft's eyes right now, too. Yeah. I can see that fire. He's a very determined man when he wants to be. I've seen it in his jungle scion, but <laughs> we'll have to see whether the Ty's counter pick on the top lane will be able to once again win them lane because Aurelia versus Rumble is a great matchup for Aurelia. Likewise, uh, EDG still have a very strong 5v5 composition, and they were winning those 5v5s on the back half from a gold deficit. So if they can just maneuver around Satai, slow him down so his split push doesn't become a factor, and take it to IG on the Baron pit, on the Dragon pit, hopefully different outcome. Well, EDG probably going to go out with a bang either way. It's Koro is going to take the Rumble into the Aurelia. Difficult matchup for him, but they saved the last pick there for Zatai. Make sure he can continue the power. Clear love taking the Rexai into the Gragas. Where's Pawn is going to be picking up his fabled Fizz into Rookie's Azir as my co-casters are making all of the gestures that the players are making, confusing me to no end. The Deft is on the Lucian into the Sivir of Kid. Mako taking his aggressive Annie against Braum in the hands of kitties. <laughs> oh, goodness me. I'm so glad the camera didn't they get back no to that. They have no idea what they're looking at. No. Really? What are you yeah. laughing at, yeah. man? Why? I explained it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I just love all the uh, 
closed fist motions. Yeah, there are a lot of holding one's arm going on there, trying to avoid using a word that you were going for there, Frostgrin. But let's get on to the riff. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, onto the riff for game three between EDG and Invictus Gaming. EDG going back to comfort, trying to win some lanes as they are most definitely on the ropes. They need to pull the Invictus Gaming on Invictus Gaming. I love the confidence here. We're up two games. This is our game set match. We have Braum. Whoa. We're going to walk into your jungle level one and punch in the face. Yeah, once again, it is a Braum Gragas pickup. It's Hello, Pawn, Pawn. Please respond. Hello? Uh, Pawn? Did he pop a pot? Oh, he no, popped he his popped flask. flask. Okay, yeah. that's not as punishing, obviously, because he can reset it. That was interesting. <laughs> I think he may have been typing or something like that. That was very confusing stuff. But IG, team, wait for some, me. Get some vision down. Mako going to make himself known. So Mako sees three people leave there, which is good news. It means that they're not hanging around. And this time around, they can just sit on the top side of the map. As Zatai going to face check Daft. Oh, Yellow Shin takes blood. him out. Yep. We Actually, were really like that skin. Wondering if we we're gonna have a lane swap coming out of EDG, but no, it looks like it will be standard lane. So again, prioritizing the fact that they have the Lucian Annie versus the Braum Sever. Pawn grabs an extra pot. That's really important. It's one thing that I like to point out in the Fizz lane is the fact that Fizz trades with his health. So he trades CS for health points. And as long as he breaks even in items, he generally always comes out ahead just because of how ridiculously well he scales. So the more health pots he can use early, the better off Pawn will be. Well, Rookie did make it to the lane a little bit earlier. Started off this creep push. This is a playful trick. He's going to be used immediately by Pawn, just trying to demand some respect in the lane. So once again, all he's going to do is the way the lane works is just continue to play full tricks to run, chunk out your minion wave, grab as much CS as you can, make sure you're not getting shoved in, because under turret is definitely not where you want to be. And see how he can make it work. Well, at the moment, it's been quite difficult for him to get to the minion wave. In fact, from these sand soldiers doing some work. Pawn at level one, now rookie hits level two. So much damage down from these sand soldiers. Pawn popping all of his consumables. Mako and Deft being very punishing with the fact that they have two range champions. Now, uh, as the camera pans down there, always take note of where Mako is standing in relation to Kid because Annie's uh, auto attack range versus Sivir's auto attack range versus Lucian. So watch Mako as he'll mirror Kid and try to zone him off. And naturally, now that Deft is level two and he'll have his relentless pursuit, him standing to the side because he can quickly dodge Braum Q. So you want your Lucian to match up with your Braum and you want your Annie to match up with Sivir. And at the moment, 12 CS to 3. Pretty good for EDG at the, this particular point. Of course, Wave in the hands of Kid at the moment. We'll see how much of it he can get back. Nice work from Rookie, keeping Pawn away from this minion wave, making sure he uses as many of those potions as possible. Fill up now around his red buff. Some extra damage here from Pawn as he's going aggressive onto Rookie. Walked back into so the sand. Soldier. I was going to yeah, say, that was really that good was a until mistake. he walked back into the sand soldier. So, one thing I want to point out is how Rookie plays most Azir matchups. Shoves really hard early, then only last hits and uses his sand soldiers to zone like he is right now. And what that does is it reverses the waves, and it's actually about to stop right in front of his turret. If we could get back there, instead, we're going to watch a gank in the top lane. Yep, well, Kakao actually not going to get any further on that one. As Deft going to wander out of the way of that Winter's Bite. Nice spell shield from Kid, but Deft, man, his dancing shoes are most certainly on. As he gets missed by multiple skill shots out of IG. As you can see, exactly where this lane is sitting right now is where Rookie wants it. In front of his turret, he's frozen the wave. He's already up in CS, and Vaughn has no choice but to go back and shot. Yeah, Mako. Oh. Kid. Another spell shield on that piercing light, giving him so much more of his mana back as well. So they're frozen two ways. They're really putting a lot of the early pressure in Kakao's hands, and Kakao's trying to stay not seen on the map, so there is the inherent pressure of Paranoia. Him. Yeah, him going to be able to gank a lane. Yeah, IG doing a fantastic job just controlling pretty much every single lane, save for really the bot one. Where there's a 13 CS discrepancy for it. Yeah, and both of these EDG members able to move out of the way of these Winter's Bites that are trying to get the work through. The kid has been pushing the wave, but has to be careful. Because they're going to have to move fairly far up for this CS. Thankfully for them, Rek'Sai on the top side of the map. 
nowhere near this particular situation. Yeah, the funny thing is, is that they're threatening enough by themselves right now. Annie Lucian to not really need the jungle to come down. You can see that stun's coming out from multiple people. Walking against the wall, though. Lands a free boomerang every time. Okay, to be careful. Man, kids' spell shields have been fantastic this series. The power will really transfer back to Lucian once he's level 6. So the cool thing about Lucian and his ultimate, how it interacts with Sivir, is that it will proc the spell shield on the first, um, what do you call it, the culling, cull, shot, bullet. And yep. then the rest of them will just eat into the back of Sivir. Naturally, needs to wait for that point, but EDG across the board really find majority of their power at level 6, which makes sense for most champions, but Fizz in particular, Rumble in particular, you know, needing that equalizer and how it impacts your drag oh, control. Oh, wow. Koro yeah. has so much pressure. He's going to overheat. Looking to try to. The flame spitter will be back up. There it is. Silences himself as well, but Kakao's here flashes so quickly to avoid that. Another spell shield down. Deft in a bit of trouble here, but Clearlove going to find his way in. Yeah, Death's just looking for a free back right now. That's why they're pushing up the wave, because he recognizes that he's a little bit low. But in saying that, Kakao has spent the majority of his time in that top lane, trying to deny the Rumble as much farm as he possibly can. Gets a flash. But level 6 also achieved right now Ooh, out of Koro, so he can low. make an impact. Yeah, Rookie cheating towards the top side. They're pinging out onto clear low. Not able to find anything uh, EDG. They're down by about 100 gold as far as CS is concerned in these lanes. Most of that due to the fact that Rookie is so far up in the mid lane, 47 to 34. Spawn tries his best to farm this one out. Has gone back, grabbed himself a Doran's ring, but that was answered in kind by Rookie who picked himself up two. He liked it. He put two rings on it. Must have liked it that little bit more. Face palm. I like how you have to say the face bomb, so it sounds a bit weird, as opposed to just being able He's to do it. He's teleporting out of the lane. My goodness. Really worried about this Gragas right now, and it's funny because Kakao wasn't doing anything threatening there. It's also the shift of Invictus getting back towards the top side of the map, so normally they're very weighted to the top side. Kakao will always be part of the first blood, but it's usually a tandem with a tie. We haven't seen that in the first two games, you know, prioritizing the bottom side, so already this game uh, looking different for EDG in terms of the first seven to ten minutes. And I like what Mako is doing. Mako has set up in the mid lane from the beginning of this, so being able to get the position, knows that he's not spotted out from wards because he swept the brush as well as he arose, means that Pawn should be able to set up a free stun right now. And saying that, Rookie not anywhere near the mid lane. Yeah, Mako is going to have to commit to this one pretty hard. At the moment, Deft is going very aggressive on the two members here on they the bottom side. They want to dive on the top side of the map. You can see they're pinging it out. They can both go over the walls. The tie won't know they're coming. Transcendent Blades is there. Nice Harpoon to land from Koro, but doesn't get too much damage. Doesn't have the tunnel wave. in from Clear Love. He's tanking it up, but he's very, very squishy at the moment. Pawn able to get the auto attacks down. Playful Tricksters, there's a tie. He's going to fall down for first blood. Rookie EDG managed to get one. It is going to be answered, like you said, by Rookie, who did a nice roam to follow up. So that is getting Pawn off early on in this matchup. So generally what EDG... EDG do, they go for that dive a lot, don't get me wrong, but they also drop wards on their way up. This time around, they didn't drop any, and Rookie just followed. And a bad back positioning out of Clear Love catches him off guard. He wanted to go back in that brush, wasn't able to get it off. And you have to expect that Rookie's going to be there to follow, especially as he's now pressuring into Clear Love's jungle. Yeah, Rookie actually trying to take that one down. So might going to be used. Very Seeker not going to be able to find Rookie. Has meant that Koro is able to even up that farm though. Only four behind at this stage with an arm guard in his back pocket. Yeah, when a really aggressive starting item actually with the amp term meant that he had an earlier spike in the early game, but also means that he's gone towards a little bit more of a defensive itemization first time around. Rookie, got the cow here. Yeah, Pawn is be the exhaust is down. Lots of sand soldiers here as well as Pawn able to get in. There's the flash forward. Playful trickster out. Didn't even use oh. the ultimate. It was on cooldown there as he gets the fish onto Kakao. Pawn 
Not even going to get taken down because Clearlov was there. Yeah, and Mako also was cheating towards that side of the map with the Tibbers available. And this is what we expect out of EDG, which is why I thought that the Fizz was going to come out first game. This is how Pawn has always attacked Rookie in the mid lane, pick an assassin and go at him because he knows Rookie is a laning mid laner. He hates losing lane, will never back out of a duel. Well, there's the flash on her kid as well as he just gets destroyed, does have at least the spell shield, but it's not going to be enough. The teleport comes down to tie. Has to cancel. Yeah, not going to be able to get anything done as Deft is playing so far up in this lane. And the victory in the mid lane is now starting to leak over into the other lanes. The fact that Pawn has control there, has pressure, means that Clearlove, Mako, and Deft can look for these dives on the bottom side of the map. So the snowball has started and we called it, you know, Pawn's going to go off this game. Yeah, and the thing is, is that Whoa. if your mid lane has control, you cannot walk into the jungle that way. This time around, mid lane doesn't have control, any control, so they just walk into Kakao's jungle. First time, first and second game, Kakao just would have killed them if he had been able to catch them. That's how far ahead he was. This time, not in position to be able to do so. They set up a free turret dive. This is also the reason that Annie loves Sivir, because good luck spell shielding that kid. As, as on point <laughs> as you have been with your spell shields, Flash Tibbers is like impossible. That's a little bit instant there, Spawn, most definitely. But Pawn, he's got an Abyssal instant. Scepter. First item, he does. Straight up. Really nice first item. It's the jungler is Gragas and the mid laner is a magic user. Go Abyssal Scepter. He's got so much uh, front loaded damage just off of his scaling and his abilities. No need to... Yeah, it's a damage amp. And oh. he's also really good with uh, Shred because he's got a top laner that is going to go penetration himself. So when they overlap with each other, nearly true damage going to be coming out of the rumble as well as that Fizz. Oh, Mako dodging out of the way. There's the Pawn's glacial fissure. They can't though. go in on this. Yeah, Pawn does have the chum. The wall oh, is out. There's the fish on the kid. He doesn't have the unbreakable, but he gets over the wall. The calling from Deft. Is it going to be enough? It is. One of the bolts sneaks through his cacao. He's now taking so much damage. Double kill for the Lucian. EDG going off in this game. Welcome back to the LPL, EDG. It's <laughs> nice to see you. Where the heck is this team been? The outright aggression from the support and jungle role. They are daring Kakao to fight them right now. And because of the... Den Ooh. What? A whole Death kid! going so aggressive underneath the turret. Mako, he might fall down as well as Clearlove is able to clean it up, but... Deft may be going a little bit overly uh, aggressive. You saw the fire in his eyes. Yeah, there was a lot of fire in those eyes, Frostburn. But once again, they deny a whole CS wave. So even though it looks like an equal trade, one for one, kid able to trade it it's back. All wave. of the farm goes over onto the jungle. All of a sudden, you have a 2 1 3 Rek'Sai heading around the map. And, and this is the clear love we have looked to the entire se uh, season. The engineer of the turret dive, being able to set it up. You know, normally it was on the Nunu, but this time around on the Rexai, like getting nice and aggressive. That's the second in a row on the bottom lane. And he picks people out and exploits them. You can see right now, they're cheating towards the bottom side of the map with the Annie, with the Rexai, like trying to get it going. Karo as well now has a level advantage there in the top lane. Still down a few CS, but... He's rumble. That extra Doesn't assist. even matter. Yeah, he'll be fine. Possibly Big thing has sorcerer shoes available soon too. Is the fact that this dragon still hasn't been contested, and you're looking across from a rumble? Wow, a rumble! Roll, roll, roll. My mouth, my tongue was just way too swollen there. <laughs> well, I you're trying to be a murloc. Yeah, I liked it. <laughs> I'm not going to be talking about that here. Spawn. Steph is going to be able to take down these minions. Kid with another fantastic spell shield. He's pretty good at spell shielding, piercing light. Once he needs go. to work on his tib Tibber shields, though. His Tibber shields? Tibber sh tib tib shields? Tibber. Tibble shields, exactly. Zatai, he's finished his Trinity Force, though. That's one, that one's easier to say. It's I Mage like the Codex ones that are being easy to say. By Fizz. <laughs> Whoa! The other thing that, uh, about the Abyssal Scepter, um, just how are you much. Are going to talk about Lucidity Boots? No. That's a, oh, dang it. I was excited about that one. You're excited about the boots? Yeah. Oh, come on. I love when he does this, when he just leaves the mid lane and just murders your jungler. Yep, there it is. Oh, that's exactly I don't think what Kakao likes it. <laughs> he's also getting a red buff. So Fizz is... Ah, oh, he's not going to take it. I was going to say, Fizz is one of the best mid lane red buff users in the game. Yeah, there's he's just going to kill another person. Yeah, I'm trying to find Kai. He's refusing to die at the moment. No, he's he's the blade search, but doesn't have the reset. Yep. Um, da -da. Will he burn the flash? To try to deny... Yeah. I thought he was going to try and burn a flash. Just to give it to Clearlove. Yeah, but he didn't yeah. have it available, so he 
That, that's why he did it. So Death in trouble. Oh yeah, Kid actually might be taken down. He is as Kid is in there with the stand oh. behind me. Mako trying to take him down, does do so. But that's a two for one. Yeah, Kitty's got the last kill as well. Kid's starting to assert some form of control over this bottom lane, however, with a good 2v2 victory. And Rookie now going into the jungle, maybe trying to return the favor. Yeah, um. That's a bit dangerous, though. Rookie got no backup there, bot lane backed. Rookie, where are you going, mate? Don't have Kakao. <laughs> he just wants to take you a You got it. Yeah, now no he needs to get out. Did he not walk over a ward? No, that was a tunnel. <laughs> that's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. Rookie. <laughs> Just swoops out. He's Don't a even worry. He's a pigeon. And now Pawn's hunting for him. Kill my jungler, will you? <laughs> oh, and look at that. He had the ward there to distract the fish man. But that was pre-planned. He's yeah, like, man, Pawn's going to come by. He's going to sweep, sweep it. Yeah. Not, you know, I place this ward so I can make sure that I can back in safety here. This is basically chess. I know. It's just plays and counter plays all over the place. Pawn able to clear out that whole wave with the playful trickster. Look, a dragon. Yeah, we'll take that. We'll find it. Good handoff. <laughs> I'm trying to get you back on topic. I apologize to these guys. Yeah. I actually was the person that engineered this. So, Poro uh, <laughs> and Kakao catch out. Yeah, he's in a lot of trouble. Oh. Um, interesting time to pause there, but Koro, I believe, might be midway through dying. Lag? Well, oh, actually a kid. Yeah. Apparently. So, a kid probably having a little bit of a problem with his PC. Pawn trying to discuss how Koro can get out of this sticky situation. <laughs> Do you flash? No. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be quite difficult for the Rumble to escape the situation. Of course, slowed down by the Chilling Smite as well. So I have a feeling that might be a kill in the way of IG. But this is a very different EDG lineup. And the fact that they picked a winning lane in the bottom side of the map seems to be what it's all about. See, we say that it's a very different EDG lineup, but this is actually exactly what EDG have always been known for. It's just well, yeah, we're finally okay. seeing We're back it. <laughs> to the same EDG is what I sort of meant. Yeah, I guess. And again, I hate to harp on it, but prioritizing Rek'Sai, prioritizing Clear Love's champion pool, protecting him, making sure that he's able to snowball his lanes ahead. We talked about, you know, Pawn. He had the f speed of fire in his eyes. Pawn looked gutted after that oh, last yeah. loss. And how well he played on the Azir, that momentum carrying over into his signature Fizz and starting to just really give it to Rookie. Yeah, so that was the difference for me this time around is after the Pawn Yasuo game, he kind of went downhill, whereas this time it looked like he was building himself back up and he's always been known for one of those players that can just go berserk. Even when he wasn't known as a star of his team, he mm -hmm. just had these performances where out of nowhere you'd be like, who the heck is this guy? Like the Faker Jewels come to mind. All the Talons game where he'd just go brutalize and Moby Boots roam around the map, kill everyone, build himself, his team a win. So definitely was not surprised to see him perform this way. What I was surprised is how he attacked Kikau. He like Rookie was like a foregone conclusion. He was like, all right, I've dealt with you. Now I'm going to go send a message to your jungler because I'm not happy with how he's treating Clear Love right now. Camping him out at the red buff, making sure he's transitioning it into other parts of the map. And sometimes League of Legends is about as much as a mental game as it is what you actually do on the Rift. So he is causing havoc everywhere. No one knows who's le next. He's got like uh, Imp's checklist right yeah. now and he's like yep took care of rookie now kakao you're dead zatai i've killed you twice in the top lane and like bottom lane is just like when they coming for us yeah kids just sitting under his turret, turret shivering <laughs> trying to get a kill back on death when he's right in there you can see not quite as happy and, and giggling like they were after the last match of course ig with so many opportunities to win this series though edg have to do like we call it the ig and come back three games in a row with this game Definitely looking a lot better for this team. And this would be the massive thing for IG, is to beat EDG when they're looking like this, when they're looking like they have the momentum and this is the team that everyone has been fearing throughout the entire LPL split. No, I completely agree, as opposed to, you know, kicking the dog when it's down, yeah. which happened in the first part of this series. But uh, game, still a lot of time left to play on it, you know, to try to give EDG their comeback story. We're about 16 minutes in as we have the clock. Yep, equalizer does go down. No damage to be taken by up. anyone. Rookie, there's the Empress Divide on the pawn. Flashes over it though. Still has the Playful Trickster, I believe. Gets exhausted. There's the Playful Trickster to try and get out. Slowed down by the red buff as the tie gets in. Equilibrium striking a hit and style is going to take him down. That's two swift kills for IG. Yeah, and that's a shutdown. And then now got a good position around the top of mid turret to be able to shove two turrets down. See if they can get the gold advantage back in their favor. Rookie already 
able to get mid lane. See where the bottom is soon to fall. Uh, Death. Oh my goodness. Death. That piercing light was able to do a lot of damage. The calling comes you through. Better Death kill trying kids, to take otherwise down. Coming He's for you. dead. Yep, this is going to be a lot of he has trouble. Flash. Yeah, the stun comes in. Trying to get some damage off. Wow. Just uses the Relentless Pursuit to get out of the way of the Glacial Fissure. They the dive, dive is going continually underneath. Mako does have the stun up, but does he have the mana for Tibbers? That's the question. Doesn't have Flash either. And IG are able to get out. Speaking so, of swagger. Yeah, double turret will fall down, however. So IG completely equalized gold. There is a lot more standing gold on the map right now for EDG. And you figure how close this game is, they will eventually fall down. But if they're able to use this short period of time where they put the game back on an even footing to create their own snowball and try and run over the top, this is definitely their moment to do it. Unfortunately, they don't necessarily have the arena to look and to take it to EDG in terms of the gold advantage that they've just accumulated because there's no dragon. Yeah, it definitely is a point. One thing you do have to look at, however, on EDG's lineup is when Annie is your longest range carry, you have a difficulty in sieging turrets. So <laughs> Dragon probably more of the arena that EDG are looking for to fight, whereas I think that Invictus are happy trying to split them around the map, get vision control, and then try and pick them off because the only way EDG take turrets is beating uh, IG there. So as long as IG have the big chokes warded up and they're able to swoop in and get the picks that they're looking for, should mean that the game's in their control. No, you're absolutely right. You have a composition with the Zero on it who's fantastic at sieging. Sivir, Siege, and Rotation Power with her on the Hunt Ultimate. And then you have Split Push potential with the Aurelia. Now, once she has that Trinity Force up and online, which just has it up, as well as the Spectre's Cal. And then just the disengage uh, security that Gragas is going to offer to you. Yeah, Zatai definitely working up through his build path as well, considering the fact that there is double AP, it's going to be difficult for a lot of damage Ooh, to come nice down. Nice communication one more yeah. time. This time out of the top laner and jungle, Mako had pulled out of that gank, and Koro still dropped the equalizer. And Pawn is going to be able to take down this pink ward. Kitties looking for him, but able to play for Trickster over that wall. Deft taking down some minions here in the mid lane as he moves up through towards the top side. Mako and Clear Love already there. The gank squad once again trying to take down Zatai. Barrel comes in, that's going to spot out their plan. And this is what we said, pick on the parts of the map where they can't quickly rotate to and knock down turrets. So even though they don't have the equalizer available, which is a very useful tool, we'll be able to take down another. Well, there's the culling onto Kakao. Not taking too much damage as Everyone the Everyone else is heading though. top. Nice stun, but Ionium Fervor going to help Kakao, the Tiger get out no of that. flash, but does have Body Slam. Yeah, he's able to get a little bit further forward. Koro, Scrap Shield not going to do it as they sacrifice the Rumble. Kakao going to lock down that kill, but EDG get the rest of them out of there. And Pawn is split pushing on the bottom side. Teleport. The time stops anything that he wanted to do. Zero way to trade for that. Pawn trying to find the assassination. Yeah, there's the Chum the Waters as well. Playful Tricks is going to go down onto Zatai. He's able to use the Equilibrium Strike and bring things back, though. The Ignite's down. Pawn able to get through. Picks up the kill. Dangerous game secures his life. And that was a little bit close. Yeah, that was very close. And it was because he used the Playful Trickster at the start of the fight and ultimately won him the fight as well, but wasn't able to dodge out of the Equilibrium Strike or any of that extra damage that came out of... Zatai, I think even Pawn would have uh, thought that was a little bit too close for comfort. That but 5, 1, and 2 now on the Fizz has another needlessly large rod. I think he flashed into Playful Trickster. No, he didn't. Well, he tried to flash away, but he was uh, on the edge. He burned his cooldown. Well, Zatai did. Yeah, Zatai flashed yeah, yeah, into yeah. it. <laughs> Unfortunate. But it was well played by Pawn nonetheless, even if it was quite close. Zombie's Hourglass has been completed here by Koro. So I just want to hit on Rookie's itemization right now. He's going for an Abyssal Scepter. You understand the reasoning behind it? Because he doesn't want to get assassinated right now. But for me, if you are against an assassin, a Fiend's Unholy Grail into the uh, wave clear build of something like the Luden's Echo, then Rylai's Crystal Scepter just keeps you a little bit safer. Right now, if you are resigning yourself to an Abyssal Scepter, you are saying that Pawnee is going to get on top of me regardless, and I don't think I can play around the range of my Sand Soldiers, and it just means that he's always going to be in harm's way. And only Kakao really benefits from it. Everyone else on your team does physical damage. Well, the time making his way around here. Clear of Pawn, the Friendship Club. He lands the Point Blank Fish. 
Clear Love able to get here as well. Zatai with no flash. He's going to fall down. Kitties and Kakao. They are here though. Playful Tricks and Nets spawn a whole heap of CS as he makes his way out. Urchin here. strikes his way back in. Understands that he's probably going to die. Oh. There's the flash over the wall though. Rookie able to get in there. Kid locks down the kill. But meanwhile, Deft is able to take down. That was three flashes. I think three it was people. two. Two. Kakao Rookie burned it initially. Yeah, so Rookie that was three use. flashes oh, for a kill. Oh my goodness, yep. That was 100% three flashes <laughs> for a kill. I counted all of them. I think they only needed Rookie to go over there. And he had the swoop. They wanted him dead. They like, did. I, that is, sometimes it's about sending a message. Message received. <laughs> <laughs> We're willing to use flashy plays to take you down. That was most crazy. Certain, they most certainly did so. But IG looking to try and grab their first dragon. Second one of the game. Of course, EDG picking up the first. But... This inner turret looking to fall relatively quickly in the top lane without the men here for IG. They're going to have to let that one fall. And once again, the reason I really like the trade is because they didn't have their mid laner, so they're not in a great position to fight. And they struggle sieging. They're going to have a perfectly fine time around Dragons and Baron as the game progresses, because that's what their team's about. Any turrets they get at this stage of the game are the added bonus. So they're legitimately, even though they traded two for one, that is still a good trade for EDG because they will struggle to knock down tier twos as the game progresses. Pawn as well. Actually not decided to go for lu the Lucidity build. Able to be happy with the 20% CDR, but picks up the Mercury Treads, understanding that he already has the penetration from the Abyssal Scepter. I love the build coming out of this Fizz. Now that Dragon is down, however, and EDG did pick up the uh, the first top tier tower, it's about how Pawn will, with his Abyssal Scepter and Mercury Treads, kind of position himself to assassinate more people. So the next big objective for EDG is going to be that second tier mid tower, which is why you see them creating two different pressure points. So move Koro down into the bottom lane. He's got the teleport. He can be uh, influential, create multiple pressure points. But I'm just curious where Pawn's going to go. Is he going to sit in the jungle between those pressure points and try to pick someone off? Or is he going to group up with his team and possibly look to force a Baron? So, I really love what Def just did, trying to chunk out Rookie, because all of a sudden Baron a very real threat, because Rookie feels he cannot go anywhere near Pawn at full health. Let alone if he's being chunked out a little <laughs> bit. So, the, any damage that he can do beforehand just sets up the assassinations to be all the more effective. They've even pulled their top laner back around this area. They want to control the objective. Maybe need to utilize a sleeper at the back of the pit whenever one is up. But in the meantime, just trying to ensure that Invictus Gaming face checks some of their huge damage. It, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. There is some DPS in this line. It's definitely relentlessly pursuing away from Invictus Gaming at the moment. Can't really take them on 1v5. Harpoon Quo's going to land there on the cow. Slow down to high heaven from the two of those. He's got a Spirit Visit. Uh, no, a Lock of the Iron Solari. That is so much magic resistant that was just disregarded by how far ahead Koro is at this stage of the game. EDG need to act. They've lost a lot of momentum over the last minute, minute and a half. Look at the massive waves uh, created into the side lanes. Yeah, IG with a huge one in the top lane. Of course, a tie creating pressure on the bottom side of the map as well. EDG. Now having to react. But right, Alatar was already taken here in the mid lane, so not needing to worry too much there, but they will need to send Koro top. And we saw their plan, you know, trying to set up for the Baron, getting uh, Invictus Gaming to face check into them and try to utilize Pawn's assassination potential, but really nice warding coming out of Kakao and Kitties to make sure that IG didn't have to take that gamble. So once again, even though EDG aren't able to make a proactive move right now, you feel like it's going to be around Dragon. 25 minutes is really early for a Baron. They were still able to grab the blue buff away from Rookie and then secure the two minion, uh, huge minion wave. So whilst EDG do need to make sure they're making proactive plays, I like the fact that they're willing to play this a little bit slower because they do have some reasonably good scaling on their lineup and not throw all of what they've built for over the last 25 minutes away. As long as they're able to count, uh, catch the bouncing waves and push them back in their own favor, eventually an objective will be up that they can fight over. And more importantly, you know, the last chance in a best of five. Yeah. There's no way they're prematurely pulling their trigger on this mm -hmm. one. No, there's also the fact that they're waiting for a lot of item spikes, like the one that just came through there for Deft as he does grab the last Whisper, as well as the Zonya's Hourglass on point. If they want a team fight, they probably want that item on their mid laner, so he can be that trickster. And Koro, he only just picked up that Leandri's Torment as well. 
just in this period of time that we've been speaking about EDG, they've gotten a whole lot more powerful with the item pickups that they've made. Yeah, and they're doing it in time for the Dragon. So whilst they're controlling the Baron area right now, Dragon's up in two minutes, as you can see on the top left of your screen. And that's, as I said, the realistic objective to fight over right now. Invictus, in fact, probably need to see whether they can grab something else on the map, because unless they execute very well, there's a full item advantage right now for Lucian. Yep, Nasa Zonya's completed as well here from Fawn Depp. He's able to clear out that ward in the back of the pit, immediately replaced there by Kitties. But EDG now has so much vision around this Baron area. This is a tug of war. They're Whoever blinks first will lose this game because if EDG lose the next team fight, they lose their advantage and hence the snowball that they got by picking things like Rumble and Lucian. But in saying that, the next team fight will definitely mean Baron if IG lose. There's no way that EDG are going to let that objective go easily. So see whether they're able to force a fight that is on their turn. Kitty's Winter's Bite, but they don't come out of the brush. Ward goes in. Culling once again, just thrown out there by Death. So Korra trying to burn down the tide, just can't do so. The dive might be on. Oh my goodness, Korra able to use the scrap shield just in time. No extra dive from Zatai. Why did Zatai not kill him? That yeah, was flat. almost disaster. Zonya's was still up for Korra. Ah, uh, yep, that's true. But I have a feeling that he had enough health to probably weather that storm anyway. So all of a sudden, what do you do? Do you send your Fizz down there to try and deal with your Aurelia? They start a fight. Yeah, do you try and catch Kitties here as he gets stunned up? Pawn in amongst it, gets exhausted immediately, uses the Zonyas. Kitties does end up falling down as Clearlove trying to turn this one around. Spell Shield for Kid. Now on cooldown as EDG only lose a bit of health on their mid laner and they take a support with them. Now Zatai did cancel his teleport, but he's committed to the bottom wave. Oh, Rookie, he gets stunned. Everyone flashes on top of him. Empress Divide collapses at the hands of EDG. Not sure what that interaction was, but it looked like that happened. Yeah, and it should be the Baron Pawn still trying to zone people away from the pit. Yeah, Pawn actually looking for Kakao here as well. He's actually quite low. Does need to be careful. The very tanky member of IG, but wow. Death just crits him in the face. A celebratory equalizer there from Koro. <laughs> that was so much health taken off by Death right there that Koro didn't know he was dead. <laughs> he threw the equalizer over anyway. As now Kid has caught out Mako. Yeah, so Ty's here. Brilliant spell shield again from Kid to block that the stun. Death. Yeah, he's looking for a blade surges there. He's so dead. Double kill for Zatai. Cleanup crew is in. Still three Barons available. And that's important because that means that you can utilize Baron in every single wave. So good that they have the three. Would rather have it also on the Lucian, but... I think it's very important to have it on the Clearlove as well because he's the one that's going to have the mobility around this map earlier than Koro. Dragon's been started up. There are two members missing out of EDG, so they will give up the objective. Need to be careful how they play this. We already said they're horrible at sieging. If they give up a Baron buff, that means they elongate the game for another six minutes. Also means that Invictus are much more secure in their win condition right now, which seems to be the time. <laughs> oh, Pawn is looking for a pick on the Rookie. Trying to find it. The Dragon does fall. This is just rude. Oh my goodness, both Clear Love and Pawn. We're going to try and find it, but Rookie not going to be doing so this time. ZDG now have about a 5,000 gold lead. 30 minutes in, 14 kills to 10. Four turrets each here, but IG able to pick up the second dragon for themselves. And the Baron's important because, again, their team is fairly weak at sieging, but against an into Azir, as you can see, it's not really amounting to much. Yeah, the one thing I will point out is still reasonably low AP on the Azir, which means that he doesn't clear out the waves as well as he would like. They're sending the tie back to the bottom lane, even though the Siege has well and truly begun mid. They're going for a dart. Yeah, there's the fish under Kakao as well. Takes it into his team. The Equalizer's fantastic this time for Koro. Three swift kills as Pawn just playing around underneath the turret. I cannot believe they sent the tie away. That was just a horrible misstep coming out of Invictus Gaming and it's cost them the game. Well, it's really easy to siege when the enemy team is entirely dead. Yeah, <laughs> best way to set up a siege, ladies and gentlemen. You've seen it demonstrated by EDG. Kill everyone. That's how it works as they're taking down Nexus turrets. Now on the Hunt's Beam Pop Kid with the ambitious play. But EDG have one thing in mind. It's taking down game three and finding... I oh know, it's just actually getting kills where they possibly can. They need to be careful, though. 
they are getting shot by Nexus turrets. The Ty is actually able to pick up Pawn as Kitties and Kid. They found their way back the in. The exhaust they is go. down under Kid. Koro can't finish off the Nexus. IG with the miracle defense. And <laughs> Def just says, no, nah, I'm getting out of here. Nah, he's dead. Yeah, it does actually have to try and outplay his way out of this one. Not going to happen. The Ty just takes him down 6, 4, and 6. Yeah, so Zatai had teleported into the mid lane, and Def was like, well, I'm not going to live through this. But no. IG buy themselves a respite. Sure, everything in their base is in tatters, but they're still able to shove out this huge minion wave in the mid lane. You can see Zatai very focused. Still not over yet. No, not over just yet. Kitties is rushing back, and he's sweeping around the Nexus to try to check for any teleport or any wards so Coral can't teleport on top of it and try to backdoor. <laughs> that was cute. Well, they have to at this stage. Clear Love, who's going to get towards his Grump now? Just clear that one out. 3, 2, and 5 for the Rek'Sai. So clear Love has been instrumental in starting off a lot of these fights, but we'll see whether EDG can bounce back from this situation, because it's difficult, you know, that game was in their hands at that moment. If everyone had turned on the Nexus, they would have won the game. Yeah, I think good teams laugh at situations like that. That wasn't really, like, that was them getting a little bit overzealous for kills. Sure, if, this ga if they lose this game, you're going to see some very red faces and a really annoyed Aaron. But yeah. right now, they're like, we have a really fed Fizz. Our AD carry is, once again, a full item ahead of their AD carry. We are still in, still in a position to be able to take this game. Not to mention the amount of pressure that mid inhibitor gives you. Having all of your minion waves catch if it ever is in your base means that you have to continually push it out. And it guarantees you side up the mid lane, which is so important for Baron and Dragon control. But you've also now funneled in pretty much a free wave into Invictus Gaming. And it's not like they're uh, hurt for clearing waves. You have the Sliver, you have the Azir. But that's that much more gold being pushed into your mouth. Oh, definitely. I, if they don't win within the next... If that Ten minutes. inhibitor respawns, then once again, horrible call. But you would think that with the strength right now in EDG, they can funnel up, use that choke point into the base as an area to corral people one more time and take the win. As IG not going to let them, they're going for the fight. Yeah, trying to. Sun Turret is up here as well as IG Ooh, have to deal with Pawn. He actually throws out the Chum the Waters onto Kitties. He's riding amongst this one. Doesn't even come down off the Playful Trickster as he is able to get out. Kitties burning to death here as well. Empress Divide onto Koro eliminates the Equalizer as Death is just going nuts on IG. Flashes forward, picks up Kitties. Clear Love still alive here as well as Rookie. Getting a lot of damage out in the disengage. But once again, they're corralling them away from the base. Their tie was. Trying to They're pull going back. The wrong way. Zatai trying to find Pawn. He's flashing on top of him. Gets the Urchin Strike over the wall. And Zatai can't follow. Use the Blade Surge. He's on the wrong side of this one. Deft. He just needs a few auto attacks. He's got so much damage. And how the cow is feel, in so IG? much trouble. Kid falls down. Rookie's going to die as well. And EDG pick up game three. They're doing the very best they can. They're doing their best impression of Edward Gaming. So, okay, 2-0. Last chance. EDG bring it back. We're going to game four. IG, reverse sweep. And once again, how does it feel? You know, game yeah. two, they shove the trundle off the Nexus, and then they everyone comes back in full force. There's nothing they can do to stop it. This time, it's a tie, trying to tie them up, the fruitless effort. Everyone else streams towards that Nexus. And you can see Zatai, he's not really that face. He had a pretty good game. The Aurelia looked they got completely two more opportunities. fine. Yeah, they got another two shots at it. And Def still looks like he is laser focused on the goal here. They yeah. need to win two more games. It's like a calculator at the moment. Just unreadable. It's just there doing mechanics, sweet stuff like that. I don't know. Mechanic, uh, it was a bad analogy, but you know what I mean. <laughs> he looked like a weapon normally, is what I'm talking normally about. Normally play-by-plays, they just keep digging that hole. He immediately backed out. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, please, please pull me out. Yeah, I don't have a ladder today, guys. <laughs> Pretty sure you've demonstrated that one thus far. Okay, but... EDG, they won from blue side. You know, you had the priority on to Rek'Sai. We knew that Fizz was going to, or Palm was going to pull out the Fizz, that he was going to try to go off. So Invictus Gaming, they they see the formula. They've already demonstrated that they understand how to counteract it, you know, throwing down all those jungle bans, getting the better matchup for Rookie. I assume that for game four, Rookie's going to look for the assassination, possibly an Ari, try to take it one-to-one. -one. 
against Pawn, and that they're going to continue to target out Clear Love. Likewise, he won't have the luxury of blue side to secure that Rek'Sai for sure. Yeah, completely agree. And the one thing that I do want to point out is that has always been good for one win. This is how EDG yep. split if they lose first game. They're like, this is the game plan that is tried and true that we will funnel towards and take control of the map that, this way. What it hasn't been good for is best of five wins. That's why we always compliment when they play other brands of League of Legends because we know that they can throw a lot of support behind Pawn and Clear Love and get control of the map. But it's about whether now that IG know that that is coming, that they can execute on something else. Well, we'll see what is going to happen as we move to the next game. But for some further analysis on...